Hello and welcome. This is Mindy. I wanted to talk to you briefly about how to finish the side of your canvas. It's kind of an age old question. People aren't ever really sure. How do I finish the side of a canvas and do I need to even do that? Well, this is a get, this is a um, painting I finished uh, not, not too terribly long ago and um, it's on a gallery wrapped um, frame. Um, which is like one inch, I believe, about one inch. And I haven't done anything with the size yet, but Easter is coming and I need to finish this piece. So um, there are a lot of diff different answers to this question, okay? So some people paint this, some people don't do anything. To me, that looks unfinished like this, right? Especially with a gallery wrap canvas. Um, a lot of people will paint this black or you could pull a color out of your painting and paint that there as i did here this is a painting i did of a poor dog marley and i just carried the the green onto the side this is also gallery wrapped you see i didn't carry her fur onto the side here and that's another thing you can do is um, you can continue your painting around the edges um, which, which is a really beautiful answer. Sometimes it gets a little funky when you're going around a corner here. Things can get askew depending on what you're painting. So um, a lot of times I keep it simple and just do a solid color. Um, another fun thing to do is to kind of treat the edge as um, kind of a fun frame, frame, frame your workout. So here I did a checker and I went right around the edges. Okay. Of course, nowadays you can find the um, the drop-in frames where this just drops in. I can't recall what they're called right now, but I'll put it in the description, the name of it in the description. So it just, these canvases drop right into a floating frame. That's what it's called. Okay, so that's a real big look right now too. And I think that's a wonderful answer. But what I've decided to do um, with my bunny, and I don't know if you can see this, but the bunny has some iridescent glitter on her, and I, I love glitter. I am a very non-traditional person, so I, I could paint the edges in black, and that would be beautiful, but instead I'm going to do something different. Um, I had I have some leftover paint by Mioted from a job that I did. Um, this product is called Crystal Brush. This one is tinted to a dark purple. Um, it's a very beautiful, very high-end um glitter paint that I like I said I have it left over from a job so I'm going to put this on there so first I'll paint the sides in a dark purple and then I will put some of this muted um, crystal brush on there and then on top of it I'm going to also sprinkle a little, little bit of bronze glitter and maybe even a little bit of green so it's going to be a dark edge but it's going to be very dynamic and then it's going to sparkle and it's going to be kind of multicolored, but not tutti frutti multicolored. So let's get started. Okay, so I decided to use a color called Violet Pansy by Folk Art. I'm painting on a sour cream cover. My friend Nina, we've been painting together for over 20 years. <laughs> she calls us garbage painters because we're always finding very strange things to use as palettes. Um, okay, so. The reason I'm putting a base coat on, and it's a little bit off, this is a little bit bluer than this, but it's fine. Um, this particular product, and a lot of metallic products, um, this is a, it is a little bit metallic, but it has, you know, um, glitter in it. A lot of times they're relatively sheer. So even though here it looks like it's opaque, this is a really thick drip. So if you look here, it's relatively sheer. So we need to start with, a, a close purple behind that okay so um, otherwise I'm going to be putting coat after coat after coat on here to cover up this white so I'm going to put a base coat of purple on to begin with and like I said it's not terribly important that it's not exactly the same shade and you can see here that this probably is even going to take two coats um, so on the edges um, you want to make, make sure you get a pretty sharp edge right here. So this is kind of what I do is I kind of load a wider brush with a little bit of paint and then I kind of, you know, do it like this instead of like this woo, because and any little quiver is going to show up. So instead, let the 
I don't know, geometry? Algebra? Math? Work for you? <laughs> I don't know how to, you know what I'm trying to say. Let the world work for you. Let the, not gravity. Anyway, the world is on your side, so. Just, just pull it like this. Whatever the science is behind that. Okay, and if you don't get all of it, like I can see a couple little waves here, you know, you, you could deal with those. Or just know that I'm going to be putting a second coat on and I can catch that the next time. And what, what may have to happen is I may have to come back and just pull a little bit. you know, to get kind of those little nubbins. And depending on um, how well, you know, I came around that tiny little corner, I might even have to get a little green to touch up and go back and forth and back and forth, whatever. But anyway, it's kind of a futzy thing, but I didn't prepare very well. I should have painted over the edge a little bit, but you know, I, I don't always plan very well. So, but it's okay. It's art and you just kind of keep working at stuff until you get it. Okay, so here again, I'm going to just, I don't know what the angle is on my brush, but I'm just kind of letting the brush do the work. This is a craft paint. This is just um, folk art craft paint, which is actually, there, there are craft paints that are actually lower quality than um, folk art. Folk art is actually kind of like one of the better ones. Um, only in that it's, you know, it has more body. Um, there's like Apple Barrel and some other ones that cost under a dollar. Um, and they're lovely paints too. I mean, they're fine to work with for crafts, but they will have more water in them. So they, and less pigment. Um, and um, so you'll have to put more coats on. So um, but these really, really saturated colors, are, you almost always have to expect to put at least two coats on, okay? But this, if this were latex paint and not acrylic paint, um, if I happen to have some dark purple, which I probably do, but I wasn't about to go look in, in my basement. But if, if I were to have a dark purple in latex, it may cover enough um, for what I need it for in one coat. But you know, this is this is just acrylic craft paint. Okay, so I'll finish this up and then I'll put a second coat on and then I'll be back. Okay. Okay, so I now have actually three coats of um, purple finish on the side, and you can see there's you know there's it's probably about ninety five percent coverage, and that's good enough for what we're doing. Um, so I've decided, in addition to the crystal brush, I'm going to use some of this green which is just it came in a pack it came in a packet um of various colors that I got from um uh uh Joann's or something I don't know like some years ago and then this is an iridescent glitter I'm gonna use a little bit of this just a little bit because I want to have that iridescent shimmer look at this is all over my hands glitter is so invasive <laughs> um a little bit of that but i don't want it to be light in value but just just a tiny bit and then a little bit of this bronze glitter okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you this product it has a date of 10 14 so it's it's almost 10 years old so october 14 let's see if it's still good you know, with all the changes in VOC laws and everything, um, products do not have the shelf life that they used to have. And this is just fine, okay? Amazingly. Um, okay, so yes, you could, you know, get a hold of Meoded and order some of this. I'll tell you, it's very spendy. I wanna say a gallon of Meoded crystal brushes, I wanna say it's like about $200. Um, and I could be wrong on that, but you know, you can kind of make your own. All right. And what, this is what I would do if I were trying to make my own glitter paint is I would take some, 
maybe some like clear coat polyurethane or something. And I would take a very, if I wanted to do purple, I would take some very pigmented either tint or paint and squirt that in there and stir it up. And it's gonna be kind of transparent because, and that's what we want because then you're gonna add in some dark purple glitter, which I don't have in front of me, but. Um, and because of the clear coat, it's going to suspend a lot of that glitter instead of bury it in the acrylic or latex paint. Okay, does that make sense? So I'm guessing that that's kind of what's happening here. Okay, and that's why it doesn't cover very well because there's some kind of a clear medium in there. All right, so you can make your own. Um, like like I always say, just experiment. It's fine. Just experiment. Okay. So I'm going to get my stuff ready. Cause I think I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do one side at a time and it's going to be literally an experiment. I don't, maybe I'll omit, you know, a color or something. I don't know. We'll see how it's looking. So I'm going to pour these out onto my used palette. I'm trying to reuse palettes after they dry so I don't go through quite so many foam plates all the time. Okay, bronze, dark green. There's my dark purple crystal brush. And then here is, let me open it. Yeah. Here's my iridescent. And see how light it is? So I'm gonna use very little of that. Okay, so I hope you can see this well enough. Okay, so I'm going to turn this on its side. Okay, so I'm going to paint one coat of crystal brush. And you can see the purple is just a little bit different. It's redder um, than my base coat, but it's fine. You see, it's close enough that it's it's covering okay. And I'm just going to do one edge at a time so I can make sure that it's wet enough to grab my glitter. In fact, I might even let it dry in between flipping the sides. We'll see. Another thing about glitter and metallics, um, they don't show up well on photos or video, which is really frustrating. <laughs> so I hope you can kind of get the gist of what's happening here, but um, I know you're not gonna be able to see how wonderful it's gonna be in the end exactly, but you just have to trust me on it. So there is a ton of glitter mixed into this um, product. Okay, and, and that the shimmer of the glitter doesn't show up until it's dry, okay? So I know what's gonna happen there. Um, let me see, can you, you can't really tell what's happened, can you? I'm gonna take a little bit of this bronze. I don't even know if you can see what I'm doing here. Probably not. Trust me on it, it looks pretty cool. Doubt that you can. Just trust me, it looks really cool. Now I'm going to take a little bit of green and just lightly sprinkle it on there. Oh, I got to be careful. I don't want too much of it on there. And then a little bit of this iridescent. Oh, yeah, that looks really cool feel bad that you can't probably see what I'm doing here very well. Can you? Can you? Can't. Just trust me, it looks really, really cool. Okay, so I'm going to do all four sides and then I'll take this out into a couple different light sources so maybe you can catch, catch it and see what it looks like when it's dry. Okay, all right. Okay. Here we are. Can you see that? Okay, so I'm gonna bring it under 
my chandelier too so you can see it. And another light source. And I'll bring it over by the window. So obviously, um, glitter is very dependent on light. Oops, I don't know if it's helping you see anything, but anyway, this is my little feller and I'm gonna go hang him up and then I'll show you what he looks like. Okay. There's my purple edge on my, on my bunny. So I hope this gave you some ideas how to finish your edges on your canvases. Okay, have a good day. Thanks for watching.